Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. We're underneath Dirt Perfect's John Deere 120. We're doing a few things today. We're doing a full service on this machine. Oil change, uh, fuel filters, clean out the air filter. We're going to give her a bath. He's been doing some dredging with it and she's got a pretty big buildup on everything and a few minor repairs. And if everything goes well with this, which when has stuff not gone well on this channel? It'll be fun, I'm sure. Now I know all the awesome subscribers understand this, but people passing through the channel might not understand everything that is required to actually do excavation work. Full service, trucking, the whole nine yards. That's what we're doing today. And then you can get a sneak peek of why excavation can be so daggone expensive. Perfect. Let me get a picture of all my filter numbers, get everything picked up, and we'll get started on this. So made to town. We got it. It's a filter. Hopefully it's the right filter. It looks right. Oh yeah. There's no numbers on it though. Why wouldn't you put numbers on the filter? It looks to be the same on both ends. Let it run out just a little bit. You might be able to tell, but I made a little bit of a mess earlier. Oops. It's okay. Into the box. in there it goes yep this little doohickey goes right in the center spring on top oh yeah make sure there's an o-ring right here We're gonna do this fuel filter next. So both of the fuel filters, they're the same number except for that last one, but both fuel filters on this machine have a water separator on them, which is pretty handy. It's just a feature on the bottom that you can uh, unscrew. It's like a little miniature petcock there. And if there's any water in the fuel, the water will come out and you just kind of turn it on and let it run until you get clean fuel out. I can show you on the one that's installed We'll see if there's any water in there. Well, there is a little water in there. You guys see that? Can you see how it's running clear? And she'll change, there she goes. Now she's diesel. Anyway, that's what that is. I don't know if you've ever seen that before or not. And if you're in the business, of course you have, but if you're not, might be something new. that in my I got a little catch pan down here next to me now I'll show you on the one I took out there are notches I don't know if it really matters which way it goes but there are notches so I'm assuming there's some sort of importance to it Oh, there she goes. 
Just trying to get all the air out of it. We'll do a few more. Whoa, buddy. You guys okay there? Oh, man. We do write the hour meters on the filters as well. We have a service chart, but just in case something ever gets lost, just a little backup so we know when we changed them. 12, 4, 4, 7. That one I wrote on it. And the door is easy to get to. This one's kind of harder to get to with a paint pen, so go ahead and put it on it before we change it. And this one does not have any notches around the collar. It's smooth all the way around, so you can pretty much put it however you want in there. I don't know if this is right or not on this one. There's not a primer pump on it, but there's a little cap on top, so I just take the cap off and fill it from the top. Somebody in the comments will let you know if this is right or wrong. Why would you ever put a drain plug in that tight? Who did this? Where are you guys at? Here. You guys go there. Just go fast. Well, you get a little, but it's not a tremendous amount. Bye. There's, this isn't. Oh, you think it needs a new filter? Not 100% sure when the camera died, but the fuel, nope, that's not what it is. The oil filter is on. I'm sure the camera died right before I didn't spill a drop. You guys saw the part, right? This is what Mike puts in, by the way. T4, 15W40. There's the hash marks there. Just a little bit more. Head out of door. Fuel filter hasn't leaked anymore since we've been running just a little bit. That's good. I think we're good in this part. Nope, she's good. Oh yeah. Wonderful. She does have 12,000 hours on her, so I started keeping the, the partial bottles of oil, or jugs of oil in the toolbox. She burns a touch. Not a lot. Just a little bit. And this way. That way. We've always got oil with it. So she needs a little bit. Well, it's right there. I guess his other hole is dry rot on him. Cracked on him and stuff. So he said while you're in town, go ahead and pick up a new one and I said, you betcha, I picked up a 50-footer. If the boss says spend money, you spend some money. That's how that works. These are the tips we use to clean the equipment, these little turbo tips. They seem to do just about as good as anything for getting all the mud and grease and stuff off. We've run into a slight problem. There is a garden hose on the front porch, but it looks very specifically Mrs. Dirt Perfect Garden Hose. Um, yeah, I'm not even gonna go there. Definitely not gonna take that one. See how we've got a left-facing light? We need to get that as a forward-facing light. Normally they just get whacked with sticks or things like that. Nothing too crazy. You guys ever see those drywallers that stack like two or three buckets on top of each other and then they uh, just waddle around on them to finish the mud that's crazy and this doesn't seem safe that should do it
truck. I'm sure you guys noticed that part. I do have to, I, confession time. I am beyond nervous to move the 120 today. I Two things, I feel like I used up all of my good karma yesterday getting that bell tower back. And Mike's been going on and on today, which I know he loves that 120, but I've never verbally heard him say minimum 10 times today about how important that machine is to him. I just, I'm on the lookout right now. I feel like the world is setting me up for something. I was just telling them I'm pretty sure the world's out to get me today. I checked the hitch like 20 times. The parking brake I about yanked out of the dash just to make sure it's engaged. Glad you're being safe and sorry. Uh -oh. I could use a YouTube bump if you could run a mirror. The exciting thing is tomorrow we get to get the truck down in there to get the sand back to where we need it. That's going to be in the morning though. I'll just meet you guys down at the lot. Well, it is the following morning. There's the steeple sitting there looking nice. But you can see it's pretty foggy down on the river and we need to go truck sand this morning. We're going to let that fog burn off because that's kind of where the highway is at anyway. She looks good in the sunlight. We're going to take the excavator, some ratchet straps, and we'll see if we can go ahead and get that pipe moved back to where it needs to go while this fog burns off, and then hopefully we'll be good to go truck.
should be able to get the C8500 back here at the sand. We're just gonna make a pile right there. I tried to track where I want my tires to go. That way when I look in the mirrors, I can kind of see, see the path I need to be on. There's not a lot of wiggle room here. And I cleaned that corner up here just a little bit to try to make it a little easier to get around there at the truck. Every time I've come back here at the CD500, I've always backed around this corner. I might try once today pulling forward and backing around this way. We'll try it and see what happens. Let's go get the truck, find out. It's not this cold. I just like hats. I just wear them when it's 50 or less. I don't know. So we're down getting our sand. We have to get what they call state sand. And we have to keep all the tickets for that. I have to show the inspector whenever they come to look at the septic system, the tickets for the state sand, so they know that's what we actually have. I don't honestly know the difference between state sand and fill sand. I just know that's what we have to get, and we have to have proof that we got it. He'll be over here at the loader in just a second, get us topped off, and we'll get back and see if we can actually back down that road and get this thing dumped in place. I'm hoping we can. Either we can get this little truck back there and dumped in place, or I'm just gonna call it and have a triaxle bring it, and we'll have to rent Mike's payloader and use his payloader to move it from the place the triaxle can get to. That's kind of the two options. Pretty day. Pretty day. Setting up the camera, I just happened to look up and notice that the spreader chains are still on. That would have been an embarrassing thing. Let me get those off real quick. reason I made this video is I have people that'll ask me, they'll either email or they'll shoot me a message on Instagram or they'll just, you know, real life people, not just the YouTube side of it, but people I actually know at the fire station or that kind of thing will say, hey, I got a quote on septic. It's a little bit more than I expected, which is kind of everything nowadays. And I'm trying to save some money. Is it possible I can do it on my own? And the answer is yes. You can always find a way to do it on your own or find a way to save some money. But I wanted to show how much work goes in just the preparation of it just getting everything to the job site. Now, maybe it was a little bit extreme servicing the machine as a part of that video, but that was the reality of the situation. Mike said, hey, if you wanna rent it up there, it needs a service before it goes out of the shop. So if I wanted to use it, I had to service it. That was a part of it. Getting all the pipe here, which it was delivered to Mike's lot, but that company does not deliver to the actual residential site. It's, um, it's a wholesale company. They deliver to the lot or to a business and you can pick it up from there. So although it got closer, still had to get up to the house and then getting the sand here as well. Now this is gonna be a little bit different than most people. I've said before, if you have a homestead or you have a lot of property and you have a lot of projects you wanna do, one of the best part-time jobs you can get just for the experience, just for the access to equipment. I was working for an excavation company and I realize a lot of people don't have access to equipment like that, but you can still rent something from a regular rental store, a cat store, if you want to do something like that, or a John Deere store. And you can still order your sand, triaxle or quad axle or tandem, whatever area you're in, and do it that way. And I thought about ordering a couple quads worth of sand, a quad axle truck worth of sand. It'd be the same amount of sand and it would cost me the same price but i had to dump it way up at the barn and then find a way to shuttle it down here so it just it made sense to take half a day and truck it down here myself in mike's little tandem 
so I can actually get it close to where the septic field's gonna go. That'll save me some time in the long run, I think. Now, on Sunday's video, we'll go over all the questions that you're typing in the comments right now that I didn't address in this video. That'll be, how much did this whole thing cost for me to do it myself? How did the permitting process work and what did the permitting process cost? Why did we go with the system we did or why did we go with the system that the state said we need to do? And I'll kind of explain that process. And I'll show you how the layout works and how they size septic systems in our area. Now keep in mind, we're in Indiana, they do it different everywhere it seems. And even in some states, it's different county to county. So this is the way we do it here. But if you wanna see how, how this field bed installation goes, stay tuned for Sunday's video and we'll go through all the stuff I just mentioned. So even further detail into how this is gonna work. I think that's enough rambling for this video. Hopefully everything kind of made sense. Hopefully voiceover Mike filled in the gaps for all of us here. He normally does a decent job. As always, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.